the key to these problems is that we have these formulas which involve definite integrals. And again, let me just point out a few things for, to you. First of all, uh, this d of x here, this is the demand function. When you're computing uh, consumer surplus, you use the demand function. And then the only other things we need are we need a value for p bar and a value for x bar. And I can show you how we compute those and then we'll um, calculate the consumer surplus. I'm tripping over my tongue here. Uh, for the producer surplus, you use the supply equation, the supply function. And, but we use the same p bar and x bar, so price and uh, quantity. So in a nutshell, we, we calculate the p and the x bar, and then we run these formulas, and we can compute the producer surplus and the consumer surplus. So here's problem 10 uh, from page 476. The management of the Titan Tire Company has determined that the quantity, X, uh, the quantity demanded X of their super Titan tires per week is related to the unit price by this relation. This is the demand function, right? Because it talks about the quantity demanded. And notice P is measured in dollars, but X is measures, measured, not measured, measured in units of a thousand and that's going to be a big deal when we get done we're going to multiply by a thousand uh, Titan will make X units of tires available in the market if the unit price is P equals 48 plus one half X squared this is the um, supply function which we'll use to compute the, compute the producer surplus so we are asked to, con to uh, determine or compute the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. And the market unit price is going to be set at equilibrium price. And equilibrium price is, that's the key to calculating these. We're going to set these two functions equal to each other. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start on the next screen. And I'll show you how to find the P bar and the X bar. In this case, it will be the equilibrium price and quantity. So to get that equilibrium price and quantity, what we do is we set these two uh, equations, the supply equation and the demand equation, equal to each other, and then we go ahead and solve. You can see this is going to be a quadratic. If we rearrange the terms, I'm going to add x squared to both sides. That will give me 3 halves x squared. And I'll subtract 48 from both sides, and that will give me 96. Then I have to multiply by two-thirds, right, to solve this thing. And two-thirds of 96 happens to be 64. And to solve for x, we take the square root of 64. We get plus or minus 8. But remember, x is a quantity here, and so um, we're not going to be producing negative 8 items or negative 8,000 items. So what we're going to do is uh, throw out the negative value and just set x bar equal to 8. So that'll be the value that we use for x bar in our formulas. And then we need to compute p bar. So just plug 8 into one of these formulas. I'm going to use the 144 minus x squared. Uh, that'd be 144 minus 64, which turns out to be 80. So we'll set our p bar at 80. OK, so we have our values that we're going to use. Now let's take a look at the consumer surplus formula. So I've plugged in the uh, appropriate information into our consumer surplus formula. This is x bar, which we picked out earlier, which was 8. I also have that down here. You can see we put p bar right here. And then this is our demand equation, our demand function. Now don't forget, we've learned how to use our technology to calculate this definite integral. So you could plug that into uh, either the online tool that we had, GeoGebra, or into your graphing calculator. You can crank out that value. Uh, but you can also do it the old-fashioned way using the antiderivative, which I'll do right here. Uh, it's just 144x minus x cubed over 3. And I'm going to evaluate that between 0 and 8. 
And don't forget we're going to subtract off 640. 8 times 80 is 640. So when you plug this in, you're going to get 144 times 8 minus 8 cubed over 3. And then when you plug in 0, of course you get 0 minus 0. And then don't forget the minus 640. And I've gone ahead and um, calculated this on my calculator. This is going to be 981 and a third, or 981.3 repeating. And when I minus 640, uh, subtract 640, I end up with 341.3 repeating. Now remember, uh, we have to multiply this by 1,000. We're going to multiply by 1,000 because uh, our value is in units of 1,000, our quantity, x. And when we do that, we get a consumer surplus of 341,333 and 33 cents. This is a comma here. So the consumer surplus, you know, it works out to be $341,333. Now let's go and we'll take a look at the producer's surplus. So just like the last slide, I've gone ahead and uh, input those numbers. The only real change uh, is that now we're using the supply function instead of the demand function. Um, but mathematically, things are very similar. Uh, we still get 640 when we do 8 times 80, we're going to subtract the value of this integral. So we're going to subtract 48x, oops, let's make that 48x, sorry about that, 48x uh, plus x cubed over 6, and we evaluate that from 0 to 8, and, of course, I've already cranked this out. This is 640. The zeros are going to be fine, but we're going to subtract off 48 times 8. And then also subtract off 8 cubed over 6. And this works out to be um, 640 minus, I think this is 469.3 repeating, 469 and a third. And when you subtract those, you get 167, 170, excuse me, 170.67. Uh, you know, 0.6 repeating is actually what that thing is. And remember that we're working in units of 1,000, uh, so we have to multiply by 1,000. So our producer surplus is 170,666 and 67 cents. We'll round up to the nearest cent there. And so this is going to be the producer surplus. So just to quickly summarize our strategy for both these problems, we need a price and a quantity, a P bar and an X bar. Typically that'll be the equilibrium price. Um, if you have just the supply and demand equation, the way you get those is you set them equal to each other, solve for x, and then plug that x back into one of the functions to get the p. Now we have p and x, and then you just run through each of these formulas. The consumer surplus, you use the demand function, and then you use p and x. And then like we did here in the producer surplus formula, we use the supply function along with p and x, and we can compute those values. So again, um, if you do still have questions, keep them coming, and good luck with your studies.